In this architectural photography editing video, I'm going to share with you my workflow that's going to help you speed through your image editing so you can go from the before version to the after in a matter of seconds. Yep, you heard me right, in seconds. I'm serious guys, you can get photos like this turned around in well under a minute. So if you want to see how I do that, let's make a start. Anthony Turnham here, professional architectural photographer. And in this video, I'm just gonna be sharing with you my real life professional workflow for getting my photos back to my client for what I call an initial proofing. So this is going to be a quick edited version of our photos, which our clients are going to be able to look at and decide, do they want that photo or not? And while this will take a little longer to demonstrate exactly what I'm doing, because I'm talking you through the process, once you get your head around it, you can get the photo's quality to around that sort of 80% deliverable mark within seconds. And what I mean by acceptable for being deliverable for this initial part, that will become clear as the video goes on. So let's get started. I'm going to press the G key to move to our grid view just so you can get a sense of what this project was. This is a new build here in New Zealand for some clients who are Canadian of origin and they wanted to give the home, the, that was what the architect was tasked with, was giving the home the kind of feel of a rural Canadian home. Now it's a long time since I went skiing in Quebec so I haven't been to Canada for some time so whether or not the architect realised the brief or not I'm not sure but it, it looks pretty good to me. So this set of photos I want to get them back to the client and looking pretty good. So I was hired by the builder that's actually made this and they want some really nice architectural images to showcase what they've done but they want a collection of somewhere between sort of 10 to 15 photos of the project. So I've really gone above and beyond in terms of my capturing of the images and I'm okay with that and I'll tell you why. And if you've seen my other architectural videos, you'll know this, I'm not shy with sharing my pricing strategies. If you're a professional, you have a right to get paid and so I don't think it should be some great secret. I feel that openness about this sort of thing is only good for our industry, it's good for the clients themselves as well. It just builds a level of trust if everyone knows exactly where they're at. So basically my clients know that they are paying me for the photo shoot to actually be there on site and capture these images. They do not own these images, I do. They are then going to license what they want from the shoot. So my task is to get these photos back through to them so that they can pick out their favorite 10 to 15. That's what they've indicated. But my challenge to myself, a personal challenge when I'm on site, is I want to capture some really great stuff far beyond what their expectations are so that when they come to make those selections, go, oh, okay, we, you know, we've got the budget for 10 or we want 10 photos, they're actually going to look at these and go, oh, do you know what? Let's go with these 20 because we just can't whittle it down. You know, we want the the exterior of the property in the day but wow doesn't it look great at night as well so let's include one of those so i'd probably got more than enough coverage during the daytime hours of my photography session i didn't need to wait around until the evening to get these shots as well but it was just something i wanted to do and i'm hopeful that my clients will want to purchase some of these photos as well which means they're happier because they have a better representation of their project and i'm happy because i'm being paid more money so for every photograph these guys are getting, they're paying me $85 plus GST. So that's $100 and that's New Zealand dollars. And I have a lot of people watching this based in the States. So I, th I think that's maybe around $70, something like that. I haven't checked the exchange rate for a while, but anyway, you get the idea. Your price point is not relevant, but it's more the concept of how you're charging. And the massive benefit of doing things this way where you're licensing your photos back to your clients is that you're saying to your clients, you've bought the rights to use this photo for your purposes and your purposes only. So if the architect comes a knock in saying, I wanna use these photos, wow, they're really cool. My builder client doesn't just say, okay, here you go, here's all the photos and send them through in a Dropbox to them. They know that they are not allowed to do that. They can use the photo for themselves, but they can't pass it on to a third party. And that's brilliant. Like just yesterday, I had an architect come to me who I hadn't actually done a shoot for before, but they came to me with a list of 10 photos saying, can we please license these 10 photos? We want to put them into the architectural awards. And so just like that, 
nine months on from when I did the initial shoot, I've just made another $1,000. Whereas if I just set a price point and said, I'll come out and do the whole photography session for, let's say, $2,000, and you own all the photographs, that's it, game over. They can just go and do what they like with those photos. When the architect wants to use those photos, they are not coming back to you to get hold of a license. And so you're missing out on money. And in my opinion, if you've created something of value that is useful to that company, and they're going to be getting marketing leverage out of your photos, then they need to pay you for your photos. And one more positive with that particular approach is if the client is only paying you for 10 photos out of your whole session, you only need to edit 10 photos. You don't wanna be spending a whole heap of time on 30, 40 different photos if the client doesn't want them. So I've gone off on a bit of a ramble there about pricing, but hopefully if you're into architectural photography, that will be of use to you. So we need to get the photos back in front of their eyeballs as quickly as possible and with the minimum of editing input, time input from us. So let's have a look at how we do that. So I am just going to select a range of photos here and I'm just gonna reset the whole lot. And I am just going to reset the whole lot. And now you'll notice that some of these, oh my gosh, these images are just undeliverable at the moment. It'd be very hard even at an initial proofing stage for the client to get a feel for what the end photo is going to look like. So I want them to get a sense of what the end image will look like, but I want to do that in a way that means I'm not investing a lot of time. So what I do is I download all my photos, I then group them into sets. So if I've created a bracketed set, so for example, my most basic approach would be a bracketed set. As you can see here, we have seven exposures we have our base exposure and then we have three darker three brighter and for a shot like this this is absolutely overkill and i know that but i'd sooner come back from the photo shoot knowing there are no holes in my coverage so for example this base exposure is nice as a base exposure i've got enough information in terms of the highlights but the shadows are really getting lost there so i'll be able to use perhaps this image here or even one of the brighter ones to create either an HDR merge or a merge based on luminosity masking. And I've got some techniques that are great for doing that in a very believable way. If you would like me to make a video about those techniques, just write HDR in the comments if that's something you're interested in, or if you'd prefer to learn about luminosity masking, write luminosity masks. Or if you'd like to see a comparison between both, write both. Anyway, back to the organizational side of things. We group these together into a stack, I close the stack down and then I'm gonna work on the base image. So for my exteriors, I will be applying my architecture starter. So if I click that, you'll just see all of my Lightroom controls just jump there. Basically, I'm dropping the highlights down to control those and I'm boosting the shadows. That's kind of a universal thing that I want to do just so that we're increasing the visual dynamic range so that our client can get a good sense of what that photo will look like. I like to work with a camera flat profile. If you don't have that, just look for something that's as flat as you can possibly find. I have flat, but there's also neutral, which is pretty close as well, but you want the flattest profile that you can possibly apply. You wanna pull down the highlights, boost the shadows, put a little bit of contrast back in there. I like to add a little bit of clarity as well, just to enhance the details. I'll boost the colors just a little bit, and normally I'll just trust the auto white balance in the camera at this point. I may well be adjusting that if this is a selected photo and then I'll go into a final edit, but for proofing purposes, I'll just leave that alone. Within the lens correction, I'm turning on chromatic aberration removal, um, enable profile correction, and that's super important because that's gonna get rid of that barrel distortion that you'll often get on wide angle lenses, and that's all built into that preset. So that's for my exteriors. Interiors tend to need a little bit more of a helping hand when it comes to the dynamic range. So if we look at this image here, this looks absolutely atrocious, right? The shadows are so dark, they're almost black, and the highlights are just completely blown out. You'll see that in my stack, I have 17 images. Let's have a quick look at what I've got inside there. I'll select them all and press N for a comparison. So I have one set of images, which is just a bracketed set using purely natural light. I then have some images where I've used off-camera flash, and these images will give me the true color rendition inside the bedroom. And then I did another series where I photographed with the internal lights on. 
and you can see as a set these photos look absolutely awful they are absolutely all over the place at the moment but I don't even concern myself at this point with how I'm going to bring these together like I know how I'm going to bring them together in Photoshop how I'll finish it off in Luminar I know all of that but that is not my concern at the moment what is my concern is just getting one of these photos from that set looking good and so if I jump back to the develop module I have a preset that gets applied to all my interiors and that is a force dynamic range plus so if I click that you can see straight away if I reset and then hover over it and I said earlier that I trust in the camera's auto white balance but occasionally it's way off and if that's the case I will just get my eyedropper here and click on something that I know should be white so that might be the ceiling uh, it might be the window frame here I know is white as well and I'm just clicking on the inside of that you see if I click on the outside we're getting the reflected greens from the grass up there so you know that's not going to be right so I might just click here knowing full well that that's going to be a pretty close white balance now but this preset is identical to the one that I used on the exterior the only difference being I've pulled the highlights all the way down and the shadows that I had only boosted up around here for my other preset I've pushed them all the way to 100 and you can see that we've got a full histogram right here like things are pretty ugly still I get that and I know that and I'm fine with that my client knows that they're not getting back a finished image at this point they're just able to see this bedroom and they may not even be interested in adding a shot of this bedroom to the collection of photos from this property so why waste my time merging together the best bits from those 17 photos that I took before and so now you know kind of what's going on with this preset I'm just going to apply that to the other ones in this series that we have reset so let me shift click on this end one here and while we do that let's have a look at another photo here this one was kind of cool I saw the sun setting across the hills here and noticed that you could see it through there so let's just go and click on that force dynamic range plus and boom I get it it looks like a nastily processed HDR image right now but my god that is so much better than what we had before if I reset that the client has no idea what direction this photo could be headed in so by me just applying one of these processes and we'll go for this one because it's not quite as extreme you'll notice that the highlights aren't at minus 100 they're just sat at minus 70 uh, the shadows aren't all the way to 100 either so this one's just a little bit more natural looking and I think we'll get away with that for this one and this could be good enough to send back to my client but there's one more thing I like to do so while I've talked through exactly what's gone on in terms of applying these presets all of this up till this stage this is all done for me when I'm just unloading the car bringing my equipment in my cards downloaded and this these presets are applied automatically I actually apply this preset to everything that comes in and then I go back to those external photos and I select them and just go with that basic architecture starter but as you can see when I hover over that it just doesn't lift the shadows enough for the interior photos because there's often much more contrast in the interior photos because you're dealing with what's going on outside as well as what's much darker inside anyway let me show you the final step of getting our photos ready for our client so we'll come back to that very first photo we were looking at and this part's really important in my opinion come to the transform section we're going to get the guided transform and basically we're just going to make sure that our verticals are nice and straight and yes I know that there are auto options full vertical level all of this stuff but I actually prefer to draw the guides myself I just feel it's a more accurate way to do things in terms of speed I could just be clicking auto or build auto into the preset so in this in this case auto has done a pretty good job let's try that again let's go with auto pretty good this is an example where I feel that the preset hasn't actually done a great job and so all I'll do is just boost the exposure up slightly and then I might come in and just add a radial filter with a boosted exposure just to deal with this left hand side of the image and now just so we don't get overblown out through the windows what I'm going to do is put another one over here and just drop the exposure down slightly maybe bring the highlights down and from an exposure point of view that's good enough to send back but I just want to make sure that we've got our uh, uprights nice and straight so I like to draw my lines right at the edge of the frame as close as I can get so there's that break between the stair and now I'm looking for the highest horizontal line in the image which I believe 
is across the top of this window frame here. So now we've straightened that out and now I just want to make sure that the edge here is nice and straight and we'll do the same here down this edge as well. If we jump to the crop and bring that in ever so slightly that just gives us a little bit of wiggle room to reframe this if we want. So if I press the backslash key now we can see our before there and our after or an even more profound change if I reset it that's what came straight out of camera and with a couple of changes that's what we're sending back to our client for an initial proofing. If they select this photo trust me it's going to look so much better as a finished piece but I've been able to get this photo from this point here simply by applying a preset that boosts the shadows, drops the highlights, drawing two radial filters, one to increase the exposure on the left, one to drop down the exposure around the windows, and then just drawing my four guidelines and I'm done. So if I press Ctrl Z to undo, that will just reapply all that stuff before I reset it. Let's jump onto the bathroom. Now I'm really looking forward to doing my finished version of this because I've got different versions with the lights on. I've done a little bit of strobe work with my new AD600 Pro. I love that Godox light. It's just working out so well for me. But for now, we're just going to go with this one. And what we want to do is come into our guided section again. And we're going to draw a nice guide along the bottom bit here to make sure this line's horizontal. We're going to look for the highest horizontal line that we can draw here, which might be across the top of this window here. So horizontally, we're nice and straight, but we're not vertical. So let's come to the edge on this side. Draw a line there, that's looking pretty good. And see these tiles down here? We're just going to use those tiles as our guide for the horizontal on the left hand side. Sorry, the vertical on the left hand side. And there we go, we have a nicely straightened bathroom. So if I turn that off and I turn that on, we're in pretty good shape there. So just so you know, I'm shooting all of this with my Nikon 16 to 35. I do not own a tilt shift lens, and that is because I use this technique. For example, in this photo here, I was wedged so far against the toilet, which is literally right behind me. I'm, I'm munched in that corner like you wouldn't believe. It was really fiddly for me just to, I had to flip the back screen of the camera around and use that to actually frame everything up because I couldn't get my head into the viewfinder to have a look that way. And so using a tilt shift in that situation to actually get all of these lines looking absolutely perfect in camera would have been an absolute nightmare. So the fact that I can draw these guides on after I've taken the shot just allows me to free myself up a little bit in terms of speed when I'm on site. And now I'm going to crop this quite heavily. I knew I was going to crop this in. I always shoot just a little bit wider than what I potentially need so that I have that ability when I'm making these corrections that if it means I'm losing some of that top right hand corner there, it doesn't matter. And that also gives me the ability to reframe my crop exactly how I might like it. And now I see that again, I might even pull this in just a little tighter still. And if I go from a reset, this was where we were before. And this is certainly not something I would want to send through to the client. And with a couple of little changes, this is what I am happy to send to them. I would certainly not be happy for this to be my finished product, but for something that's just taken me 30 seconds to get ready for the client, I'm happy with that minimal time investment so that they can look at it and say, yeah, we want to pay you $100 for that photo. Get it ready for us. Can you see down here? I actually have 32 different photographs that I took as part of this series, all with different lighting combinations. I think I was doing nine different exposures as part of my bracketed set. You can actually see in these flashed versions here that I haven't corrected yet. You can see my jeans here because <laughs> because I was there was literally nowhere for me to go. But as you know from our cropped version that we've got ready for our client here, that won't even matter anyway because those corrected verticals will mean that my leg disappears if I want to use any of that frame. Okay, and now I've noticed that we actually have a bit of a repeat going on of the same series. Something must have caught my eye when I was doing this series that I wanted to change. So if we jump to this series here, yeah, this was what was annoying me. You can see that I'd overlooked the fact that the tap handle was face, not facing forward and the soap was pointing backwards and that was kind of bugging me. So in my finished version, I straightened those up and I moved the soap to the other side of the tap as well. With retrospect, I think it would have been better if I'd just removed that soap altogether. And that's the sort of thing that I may well do in Photoshop 
if the client chooses this particular shot. But for me, this is a much nicer and more architectural image. And, and you can actually see the proximity of the toilet there. So you can imagine for this shot that I was showing you before, where we're actually even able to see the edge of this here, you can see where I must have been with my tripod. I was literally wedged up against that wall. Fun times in the bathroom. I was going to demonstrate correcting all of these photos, but I really think that's overkill to be honest. I hope you've got the idea. Let's just do one more quickly. As a Kickstarter, let's just click auto and see what it does. Okay, and this is my problem with doing things with auto. It doesn't necessarily do a particularly good job. Look at the verticals. They are keystoning up towards the top. So it's as if we're tilting the camera up. We don't want that. We want everything nice and straight, but we can try full and that does a better job but now our horizontal line up here by the ceiling, you can see that that is not dead flush with the edge of the frame. So this is one of those times where you have to come in and do it with guided. And oftentimes I find that the auto and the full just aren't cutting it. So normally I prefer just to jump straight into guided and take care of it myself. And then I know that things are right. And you may be thinking, why didn't you just shoot it straight? Keep the back of the camera parallel in the first place and then you wouldn't even need to straighten up anything but in actual fact if you want a particular frame like I did here I had to have the camera in this position and I had to have it tilted in this particular way to allow me to get this little strip of the ceiling here and make sure that the rug finished here and still showed a little bit of the floor I had to tilt the camera in that way and for me to correct that with a tilt shift lens on site Yes, I could have done that, but how quick and easy was that to take this from this to this in post-production? And I'm shooting on a 45 megapixel camera, so I have more than enough pixels to throw away by correcting distortions. It's really not an issue. But one thing that is an issue for me is the kitchen looks great with the exposure, but everything around the edge looks a little bit bright. So I might just really quickly throw on a darkening vignette. So I just need to invert that and boom, that's just taken care of the edges and just darkened them down. And those are the kind of per photo changes that I might make. Just something really quick before I send it back to the client. Again, just so that the photo looks pretty good so that you can get a sense of whether they like it or not. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. If it has, do me a favor, leave me a thumbs up. I'm happy to share my information with you guys, but help me out with a bit of encouragement for giving away free information. All you need to do, just leave that thumbs up, leave me a comment, it means the world to me, and it also helps my video reach more people, helps my channel out, and incidentally, do subscribe. If architectural photography is your thing, I do post a variety of photography and editing based videos. But a lot of my professional work these days is high-end architectural work. So if that's something that interests you, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If there's something specific you want help with, let me know in the comments. Also, other things you want to learn about architectural photography, let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. By the time I'd travelled back from this shoot, done my downloads, and just started doing those corrections, it was 1am. So it is currently the morning after. I'm feeling a little jaded, still waiting for the coffee to kick in. So I hope this video has made sense. I hope I haven't jibber-jabbered too much. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much.